the next stage is pressing. And uh, the way this used to be done will be to have a large platen or metal sheet uh, which ran underneath the forming station or maybe the forming station ran over the top of the metal sheet. The metal sheet would then transferred to a press uh, and then there'd be a top and a bottom platen which would close and uh, then that uh, <coughs> mat would be pressed at a certain temperature and steam would escape from the edges and they probably have little holes in the, the platens as well to let the steam escape. Uh, that's all well and good but it's rather inefficient and rather slow. So to get around that um, they devised pressing stations which had a large number of these platens and then the, um, the mats sitting on their metal sheets are pushed in to each of these forming sta each of these um, pressing stations and then the whole lot is closed and that type of press is called a multi daylight, you still see these in operation, a multi-daylight press. So you can do a lot more in any one go, but obviously it takes time to load them up and it takes time to empty them and then it takes time to do the pressing, so you probably need more than one of these. If you've got a continuous production of particles, you really want to have a continuous production of particle boards, so it would make sense to have more than one multi-daylight press. Um, so what they do these days is they use continuous pressing, Conti presses, um, and a continuous press will have a forming station at one end, it will have a pre-pressing stage where the mat is consolidated, but uh, they don't use heat to cure the resin, and the consolidation is there to basically get the air pockets out, make sure the mat has been formed uh, more evenly, because if you don't have this even distribution of particles, you can get hot spots forming. Hot spots inevitably lead to localised steam formation, holes lead to localised steam formation, anything like that can lead to blowing, and blowing's a bad thing because it costs a lot of money, because you are now causing all sorts of problems with the the sheet which you'll have to get rid of, um, so something to avoid. So a Conti press will basically have a, a long continuous set of conveyors, I'm not going to put the details in, it's a little bit like a paper press in some ways, and over the length of this continuous press there's a whole load of wheels, um, rollers, which are computer controlled. So the pressure that's applied to this mat is controlled under very, very uh, careful conditions. The temperature that's applied through this region is also very carefully controlled. And the idea is to consolidate the mat in the pre-press section, put it into the hot press section and do the forming, which can take several minutes. Um, with forming, you want to allow time for the particles to find their own place within the, uh, the mat inside the furnish, the furnish within the, um, the press. Uh, but you want to make sure that the resin is fully cured. You don't want to over cure the resin. You don't want to under cure the resin. So there's quite a lot of um, research goes into getting this right. Um, the board, when it comes out the end, there's always some release um, which is called spring back. So this has to be designed in as well. We have to understand that viscoelastic effect that I talked about when I was talking about mechanical properties. Um, and then once the sheet comes out, this is from a continuous press now, so we've got this continuous sheet coming out, we need to saw it into whatever lengths and we need to saw it into widths and we need to sand it. All these things need to be done so that we get a nice finish to the board. Um, what we need to do as well of course we need to let the board cool down so we'll probably let it cool down before we sand it 
but we'll do the sawing beforehand, we'll get the dimensions right. And to cool down the board, it normally goes into something that's called a star cooler. And you'll see why it's called a star cooler. It's really worth going around one of these factories. It's really interesting to see them in operation. And a star cooler is something like that. And uh, this is looking at the end. A board comes in, sits in the rack, and the star cooler moves around one unit. And then uh, as the boards go around, of course, they cool off. And then at some point, they're taken off the star cooler because they've been there long enough to cool down. And then they'll probably go to a sanding station after that. So that is a star cooler.